this is a meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Today is Tuesday, March 19th. It is 1.30 p.m. Is there a motion to call the meeting to order? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. This meeting is being audio and videotaped. Is most, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business is regionalization positions discussion. Mr. Kelly asked to have this on the agenda. Mr. Kelly, I'll turn it over to you. All right. I've, rather than have staff spin their wheels, I wanted to get out in front of this with the board because we've had a couple of inquiries uh, and they're in two different categories. One is uh, regional dispatch where right now there are two towns uh, that are adjacent to a Kushnet that are using regional dispatch groups that are geographically on the, uh, the other side of uh, Plymouth County and Norfolk County and uh, they were talking to me and uh, were inquiring whether a Kushnet would be interested in going forward investigating grants for a regional dispatch with the Kushnet being the hub. So it would be towns that are surrounding a Kushnet uh, and a Kushnet would be the hub and it would be centered here in a Kushnet. And it, it's going to take a little bit of work, so uh, I'm fine and I've talked to the fire chief, uh, briefly talked to the police chief. The fire chief says there are a number of grants available for even just the planning stage. And so if the board wants us to investigate that and keep the discussions going with the neighboring towns, the staff would be glad to do it. But if the board doesn't want us to investigate it, then I'm fine with standing down because it is going to take some time. Well, Mr. Inkley, I know you're the liaison to ASME and you've been having some discussions with dispatch. Correct. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, first thing, um, Mr. Kelly, how many towns are involved with this besides Cushman? Right now, there are two others that have made inquiries, and I can reach out to two others. So right. it would be five or six. There is the vision that some of the other towns were given me. They were talking to us because we would be the center of the wheel, so to speak. I think I, I think it's worth looking into. Um, being that it's dispatchers and that involved half me, I'd like to be a part of it for sure. I mean, I got about halfway through discussions with dispatchers already. I'd like to it, follow through and finish it. If a question it is a hub, then it would be a, a part of the AFSME unit. And the, the only concern that I would express right out of the gate is. We, you opened up saying two communities, but then you just said multiple more communities. I, I don't know how much congestion we would have in the system where it would start impacting um, the workflow and workload of our town and the safety and well-being of our town and response time. So I wouldn't want to get to, to a point where we become the giant regional hub and we take on too many communities. I think there's gotta be some kind of a, I'm all for it, I just think there's gotta be some kind of a cutoff where we're not inviting in, you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten communities and then the lines are just cranking and we can't provide a, a good service, quality of service to our residents. So I would just ask that that stays in the mindset of anybody and everybody who's in the discussions that we're not gonna get to that kind of a workflow, right? Um, Lona? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, we should look into it. By yeah. I'm, I'm fine with exploring it. Need a motion? 
No. I just need yeah. to inform the board I mean, at if, this point. If this is going to be, I think if there's going to be dialogue, you want to be involved? Correct. I would so like to be. He's, they asked me, liaison for negotiating ASME contracts, then. I think the first thing we do is uh, investigate what and how much yeah. all of the grants are <laughs> yeah. involved because the state and the federal government both uh, are encouraging this. I do know that right now one of the community, uh, com the community that's our backup, if let's say, God forbid, our dispatch goes down, is joining another regional dispatch. So uh, down the road a piece, they would be interested maybe in talking to us again, but. Uh, until we even see what the grants are and what it entails. I know I know that I know that in the past we've had conversations with our former police chief and our current police chief and there was no interest in us regionalizing dispatch, meaning we outsource our dispatch, but it's a different story if we remain in house and we provide a service to other communities. We control maybe maybe that conversation it's time to have that conversation yeah. and right we have the ultimate control of what's going on and we still remain in-house and we can provide that service to our residents and not lose that contact being somewhere out in Timbuktu with a regional office somewhere that's not even around here um, God forbid something would happen so as long as we have that control in-house um, and everything stays the same for our residents I'm 100% behind exploring it All right. The second category is uh, we've had some inquiries similar to the inquiry we had about the town planner about sharing some positions or splitting some positions. And uh, especially since a number of towns adjacent to us as well as ourselves have been advertising for vacant positions and not getting uh, folks in at our salary level. So I would want to know if the board wants me to expand inquiries beyond the one we've already done. I think we should. I mean, at this point, look, we're going through a budget cycle right now. It's going gonna, it's gonna to stress the overall operation. We should be looking at every business model possible. If that means sharing services, it means sharing services. I mean, it's not regionalization per se, quasi. But sharing services, I think we got to look at that in the, you know, especially like the permitting side of things. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I don't. I think it makes, right now it's very difficult, right? It doesn't matter what industry you're in. It doesn't matter whether you're municipal or private sector, public or private sector. It's it's miserable to try to find employees, good employees, right? Um, so be it when I say good, more to, to the qualification levels. Um, I watch MMA job postings constantly. I see people refreshing their advertisement constantly. Um, there's just not a lot of people out there that are interested in doing anything. I don't care if you're a garbage man or you're a town accountant for a municipality, a treasurer, or whatever it is. So, you know, if we get a, we got to explore all options, as Mr. Owner said. It is what it is. We got to keep, we got to maintain a level of service for our residents. I think that's what that comes down to. And when you have an office where there's nobody in it, that's not maintaining a level of service, right? Does that level of service maybe? that equation changes a bit for levels of service, meaning somebody full-time versus shared, you know, in another municipality, part-time there, part-time there. I know based on talking with other people in other communities, that conversation is taking place regardless of where you're at. So um, if that's what the model says we need to do, that's what we need to do. It'll be a discussion that we have to have with everyone, right? I'm just, I'm putting this out there as I'm thinking it through, right? Like, you know, if we were to get into a, um, 
you know, a part-time you know, shared services and it resulted in a part-time, I think one of the things we probably want to look at is with the partnering municipality is that the hours are transferred, right? So if an accretion resident needed something, they could go to wherever that person is located, whether they're in Kushnet or some other municipality physically, to talk to them. It's not just, if we, I think if, if we're flexible mm -hmm. in that way, then I think it really, it could go from being an okay situation to a better situation, like to a good situation, right? Yeah, so, you're, so you're basically describing if we shared XYZ position right. with another municipality, it wouldn't so much be, there would be a requirement for so many hours here, so many hours there. But what you're saying is if they weren't in the hours being worked here, right. you could always make a call or do something in the yeah. other town and right. say, can I come by and have this signed and, right. you know, things of the yeah. like. I think that's what you're yeah, trying that's to exactly explain, right? right? As as the model will work, will work and we're not only providing a service for three and a half, four hours a day. Right. If there was something, as he said, permitting, you know, whatever mm -hmm. department that may require, conservation, building, water health, whatever it may be, wherever we're at in the permitting process. I'm just throwing that out there as I'm thinking it through. Yeah. Like, it know, makes the, sense. The more flexible we are, the better the opportunity. But if we're just like, well, it only has to be this way, then it'll never work. You know, I think all, all municipalities have to be as flexible and creative as possible for this to work. For this. Right, right now, you've got a situation with in some positions that when, let's say, our person is on vacation, the town next door's person in that position covers for our guy. So that's really the start of this. And now we're going to the point where uh, there's such a small pool of Right. either certified, licensed, or qualified people. Right. Especially the neighboring communities all advertising for the same position at the same yep. time, yep. right? Yep. yep, we're just cannibalizing ourselves, right? One yep. town does this, the other town says, well, now I gotta better them. And once they better them, it's definition of insanity. Everybody just keeps going yeah. at each other's throat. And the next thing you know, that's why people are complaining that people's salaries are up here. It's because we're just cannibalizing ourselves, right? So I think if we were in that shared services group, everybody would have a common interest, right? Instead of that, everybody at each other's throat for that. I mean, there's, there's positions we can do it for, other positions we can't do it for. But, um, you know, you got to think outside the box um, in today's world. Um, and that's for us to spin these ideas around like we're doing today and say, you know, what are we going to do and how are we going to fill a void in the gap, right? Because I know one thing, we have certain positions that are open positions right now and it's not working out very well for us, right? Um, it's, it's actually hindering our services to our residents, so, um, and I'm not happy about that, so. Uh, We've got to take the, like, the gig economy, really, that's how we got to approach it, right? You get some people, they don't have one full-time job, they have three or four different jobs and making more money than somebody who's just tied to a desk all day, right? So I think as, a, as government, well, the more flexible we are, the better off we'll be. I had breakfast with the mayor and town administrator the other day. I've talked a couple times with the Fairhaven town administrator. I've got uh, an appointment with the to talk to Rochester next week. So we're just trying to compare notes where everyone is recruiting. And then uh, we'll re I'll report back to the board. Good. Great. That's it on that conversation. The next one's just the interim town accountant. I, um, we did that last meeting. Yeah, and I, I'm presenting to the board a scope of services that I'm going to be presenting to Ms. Mooney. Uh, I'm going to verify it with the uh, former town accountant. He and I are having lunch on Friday. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to make sure nothing falls through the cracks, I present it to the board and I ask the board if they uh, see anything that they do not feel should be there or see, don't see anything they do feel should be there. Please uh, 
get back to me and when I talked to the former town accountant on Friday uh, I'll either add it to the list or ask, ask for a comment from him. Okay. Good enough. Any questions, comments, concerns on that subject matter, gentlemen? Sure. Mm -hmm. No action needs to be taken. And the next one, the real reason this meeting has um, been scheduled, we had to meet before March 20th um, for the right of first refusal for 474 Middle Road. Um, you know, I think I've discussed this with the board before. It's $600,000 is the bona fide offer that's been offered. I believe the parcel of land is 27 acres plus or minus. Significant amount of that 27 acres is was described in a older ad a few years ago on one of the realtor websites as 20 million wetlands. I've looked at the property. Um, there is a significant amount of wetlands on the property. Um, it is a nice piece of property for the town to take ownership of because it, it's backed up by the river, other conservation land, it goes over to Weldon Lane and then all the way over to the Faven and Cushnet Land Trust on the corner of Middle Road by the Pine Hill Pavilion property and then it goes all the way to the golf course. However, the price tag is what hurts. $600,000 um, for this piece of land, I, I don't see how it's a great deal for the town um, being significantly wetlands um, and not only that I don't see how it's a great deal for the individual that's proposed to buy this property for six hundred thousand dollars so I think there's a lot of uphill battles for th for that individual to develop this parcel of land um, seeing how there's no sewer out there right so I just I don't think there's that kind of money in the CPC kitty um, for us to move forward, I think it's you know we're in a you know a tough spot right now. I know it's a different pool of money, but the conversations you know, has been had, continues to be had about the deficits that we have right now. Um, I I don't want to demonstrate that we we say we don't have money on this side, but yeah, we're going crazy spending on the other side. There's some big ask already going to be asked of the taxpayers of a cushion it. So um, in my opinion, I know that board of assessors likes it because of the riverfront um, property. There's not too much interest in planning. Um, and conservation had an interest as well, but they were concerned about the price tag of this property as well. So, I mean, if we had the available funds in CPC, which I don't believe we do have available funds in CPC. Mr. Kelly, are you familiar with? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I, I sure. may, I, before he left, I had Nick pull those numbers and you have to wipe out every CPC dollar and then find more to do it. Right. So, I mean, that's an ultimate concern. Uh, again, I'm all for open space and recreation property. Um, just a huge price tag, and it just, economically, it just doesn't make sense, the whole thing. It was up for sale years, a few years back for 400 and change, and the individual that's buying it, a good person, realtor, developer, but it doesn't make sense. Now we're gonna buy it for 600, we could have bought it for four and change before, just something, I don't know, it just baffles me. I don't know if you were yeah, yeah. Any, all of the above you know it just I'd love to do it we have CPC for a reason I know there's many people I've talked to about um, CPC and said you know if we don't start doing something for open space um, there was a sense of having CPC because that to where its original intent was I said CPC does do some good things in the town of a cushion it I get it um, we should be purchasing large tracts of land if we can um, there hasn't been that much available to us and if the deal doesn't go through and another offer comes in at a lower price, which obviously that would have to be the case, right? Yep. Um, then maybe we could act on that at that point, but I'm, I'm just not not willing to make that fight and struggle to the townspeople over, you know, this parcel of land that's a significant portion is wetland, so. Is there a, a motion to a forego or right of first refusal? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, can we contact the attorney that sent us a letter? Let him know. Selectman's announcements. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just would like to wish my mother a happy 65th birthday, a little belated. Um, uh, happy birthday, Mom. Happy birthday, Mom. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. 
feeling better. Uh, Mr. Walnut, anything? I do not have anything. All right. Uh, next meeting is tomorrow. Tuesday. Tomorrow, will the school department finds a joint. Oh, well, yeah. So tomorrow night is a joint meeting. Joint meeting with the FinCom School Committee, Kushner Public Schools Board of Selectmen. It starts like super late, past my bedtime at 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's at the Kushner Public Schools. Yeah, it's about the library. And then following that meeting, our next selectman's meeting is Tuesday, March 26, 2024. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.